are still not literate. So I don't call them illiterate because mentally they are very literate. That's also the view of your chancellor, professor, Amartya uh, Sen. But uh, some of them, they don't have the advantages of what, what we call read and write literacy. But mentally, I think they are literate. And when we look at them, one thing uh, which becomes very clear, especially in the face is that, you know, very few of them may be talking about, let us say, theories like Big Bang Theory, or Theory of Evolution, or, you know, I mean, the theory of, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, other scientific theories. But I think almost to every Indian and every uh, uh, this man or woman has some, some idea of the past, some sense of the past. And uh, you know, very few of them have had the advantage of going to school, much less colleges, much less university level education. But still, uh, they have uh, some idea, some notion of the past. So, now, how did they acquire this uh, sense of uh, the past? Uh, uh, I think some studies have been done, but probably as you can see a little later, uh, there is something more which we can still uh, uh, do and understand how they have acquired it and how they have used it. But I don't know that. But, so, I mean, uh, uh, just agree with me for a while that there is uh, a deep sense of the past in every Indian. I agree with you. Later on, we can disagree, but let us just proceed with this uh, premise. If uh, that is accepted uh, even for a while, then, uh, you know, I think. Uh, very few efforts, very limited attempts have been made to socialize and to humanize our studies of the past. And as I mentioned earlier, very deep academic adventures have, you see, I mean, uh, 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 have been, uh, you see, uh, uh, have been made and a large amount of Success see, has been achieved, and uh, still there are many things from the academic point of view. But, but I mean, what is the, you know, I mean, uh, uh, what is the sense of the past among Indian people? How see, they they have acquired it? How they have acquired it? In fact, and what are the sources? And what are the uh, what are the methods they employed you know, to have this sense of the past? And equally important to uh, how they have been using it across ages see, and how they are using it to uh, now, whether in a positive way or in a negative way. Uh, I think uh, I think not uh, uh, almost every one of you can sure be like that uh, this is a topic which can just brush it aside. See. I mean the say that oh, this is not, this is not, you know, uh, if we are a friend or a pair of the Gumbila Kapoor or the Infana, we may say, oh, this is not academic and this is not. But then, I think there are you know, people connected to historical studies who are not exactly like Gumbila Kapoor or the Infana, I think, would like to sort of take to the general Indian the population to be along with us and, and uh, as far as my understanding goes, your chancellor is one of these persons who would like to, uh, I mean, uh, look at Indian people and to sort of make attempts to improve their welfare, bodily welfare, but I think to, is one who is equally interested in the understanding to what these people are and what are their achievements, what are their accomplishments, and what is their mindset. So the point is, uh, I mean, uh, see, there is, I think, uh, a, a big need, you know, to to to, to socialize and to humanize uh, the study of the past, and this is particularly uh, called for in areas like India and China, where uh, there is a deep sense of the past. Good, bad, that's the Now, 
where he talks about the world being divided into seven or eight compartments and uh, they are divided along the lines of the, along the axis of the religion, along the axis of the civilization and uh, he called the Indian areas uh, as coming under the Hindu sort of you know, rubric, whatever that may be. And uh, then he visualizes, he visualizes uh, uh, at least he visualized uh, that there is uh, a uh, tremendous uh, conflict, tension among uh, these, uh, you know, components of the world, you know, uh, several eight uh, areas. And uh, uh, although Professor Mathias Sayer tried to answer this, but I think in a way, uh, these things, uh, the things which we see around us, you know, uh, we see in uh, Egypt, uh, we see in India, uh, we see in uh, uh, Paris, what has happened to this uh, cartoon newspaper, Charlie Hebdo, you know, you see, and it uh, appears that uh, Huntington is not uh, exactly wrong. You see, there seems to be some, you see. So, it appears that uh, there is some amount of tension in the world, and tension uh, was created for economic reasons, for political reasons, etc. But tension, anxiety, you know, uh, created also out of, you know, the reasons connected with the heritage in general. See, one's religious identity, one's civilizational identity, uh, and uh, are we to in India? The very fact that Huntington you know, branded this area as coming out of the old Hindu fold, no. I mean, is it acceptable? I mean, and if you look at the things that have been happening in the past, and more recently, in the last uh, half year or so, I think there is quite some tension, you know, uh, quite some uh, fresh tension, see, that has come up. And uh, various things which you read in the newspapers, almost every day something or the other comes, see. And uh, so, uh, uh, maybe I'll put uh, a few things a little later, but let me see. And, uh, 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 and the, so it appears that there is uh, some real need, you know, to, to I mean, uh, to understand, uh, uh, you know, uh, our heritage and uh, in relation to our people and uh, their mindset. In fact, uh, what they understand of uh, our heritage and uh, how they have acquired it and how they are using it this way or this way, in a positive way and uh, and whether you know we as students, senior or junior students of heritage, in the widest sense, even even forests and you know, rivers and mountains, the environment is all about the study of the environment is all about, it's also part of our heritage, natural heritage and man created heritage. Uh, whether we could, I mean, uh, uh, put forward some ideas, you see, you know. I don't know to what extent our ideas will be acceptable you see, to the uh, course that we, but whether, you see, I mean, uh, whether we can, I mean, uh, sort of express our opinions as to what has been happening, how to deal with the, the situations. And this is, uh, this is uh, the larger, see, I mean, purpose I have in mind. And uh, I said I will talk, see, the topic like the past and the present, or the past in the present, or you, know, you can also put it this way, heritage and identity crisis. And so. Now, how do we, I mean, uh, you know, uh, you see, some other, I don't feel like to make use of any of the writings done by the academics. You see, we, are, we academics, we write a lot, volumes and volumes, you know, see, and a lot of, see, I mean, the, uh, what we say, academic issues. But, you know, people are, left somewhere there, but can we, see, I mean, uh, can we, you know, take our people also with us in, in our, you know, see, uh, ideas uh, related to concerning the heritage uh, discussions. So here, I find uh, the writings of some of the non-specialists, you know, apart from the academics, they have been, uh, still there, quite a good number of, uh, you know, writers who were and were equally interested in our heritage and who have 
written in their own way. See, I mean, the, they may not be very, very useful, you know, for a classroom teaching and for a higher research, but they are equally important. And in fact, you know, these writings have been done to keeping people in their view. And it is here I, you know, find the, the writings of uh, Pandit Nehru, who is uh, a person who is very much passionate about these things, you know. I don't know, you see, I 